been a little bit of a hot minute since I've seen you guys. Um, lots of things have been going on and that's just going to have to wait till my next podcast because I have a guest again today. Everyone, I would like to welcome you and my guest to the Flying Needles podcast and we have with us today, we have River of Yarn. Hello. She is a knitwear designer, brand new and conveniently also my firstborn child. <laughs> hey, what are you going to do? It's like keeping it in the family, you, you know? Surprise. Surprise. Oh, happy hands. Woohoo. <laughs> so the Flying Needles is in Williamsburg, Virginia. If you've not visited us or had the opportunity to visit us, we invite you to come. We're tons of fun. At least we think we are. We hope that you find that we are. Um, we are located at 5251 John Tyler Highway in historic Williamsburg, Virginia. And we are a purveyor of fine fibers. You like that? That's, That's like pretty the, good. You like that alliteration? I like the alliteration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been here almost a year and three quarters now. And if you've not visited us, come on down. Love to have you. I know that you guys travel the world looking for great yarns. Um, I think that we have a few. So come on down. You can find us at flyingneedlesyarn.com. Find out all about us. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. Um, and for those of you who are coming back, welcome back. I have some really great customers who come in and said, ha, huh, I had coffee with you this morning. <laughs> it's hysterical. And I really want to have coffee with them. <laughs> That's the worst part. Okay, so this is actually Lauren Dickerson. Um, she just graduated from William & Mary. And then I'm going to hand it over to her to let her talk about herself a little bit. Hello everyone. So I, as my mom just said, I just graduated from William & Mary with a degree in history and government. Um, I, my mom opened her business two years ago. I started knitting a little bit, a good bit before that. I started when I was 14. Um, let me just pause you. Yes, I lost my mind. One child in college, one child in high school, and opening a shop. Like really, what was I thinking? But enough of that. Please continue. Um, so actually, my mom couldn't teach me how to knit because I'm left-handed. Um, we had the hardest time because, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not stupid and she's not a bad teacher, but we just couldn't figure it out because I'm I have now resolved the issue of teaching a lefty now. I can do that now. This is way before <laughs> I owned my shop. So my grandmother, who is left-handed, taught me, um, which is funny because a couple of years later when mom actually opened her shop, mm -hmm. came in mm -hmm. and asked for knitting lessons. That's uh, pretty funny. And now you can't get her away from sweaters. Yeah, so the, what are you going to do? The irony. Um, yeah. Do you have any other questions for me? Do you all, for, for the people? For the people? For the people. No, I think that you pretty much covered it. Yeah. Are you ready to dive in? Yeah, let's do it. Well, I have to say, I, I this is not something that we plan. This is something that just happened organically. Um, mom builds a shop and daughter just kind of goes crazy and starts doing knitwear designs. Uh, it's just, I promise you, it was not by, not by design, ha ha ha, pun intended. So, um, Lauren, yeah. why don't you tell everybody a little bit about why you decided to do some knitwear designs? Sure. Um, so, I don't know if any of you have had this exact experience, but uh, when you're the daughter of a uh, owner of a knit shop, you end up doing a lot of sample knitting. And by <coughs> sample <coughs> knitting, I mean... <laughs> Oh, hey, that thing that's on your needles is really pretty, <laughs> and I want it. You didn't tell me you were going to out me today. <laughs> you didn't tell me that. Like, that's not okay. That's not okay. <laughs> so, I've had lots of experience um, test knitting patterns, I suppose, we'll or sample it. knitting sample patterns knitting. for yes. um, the shop. And so, you know, I've been able, I've been lucky enough to play with a lot of beautiful different fibers and play with a lot of beautiful different patterns, and I wanted to make a shawl that was in DK yarn with a lace pattern that I liked that also had a fade and I could not find it anywhere looked high and low and I just didn't find anything I liked so so you're telling me that Ravelry with because because I'm a Ravel I'm a Ravelry distributor um, Ravelry with 350,000 patterns you could not find what you were looking for I just didn't find what I liked uh, now it could be said that I maybe have very particular tastes huh. 
Could, maybe. <laughs> Could be said that I'm maybe picky. Okay. Uh, but I just wasn't finding what I liked. And so I said, well, forget it. I'm just gonna figure something out. And so I took pieces of what I had learned from other different patterns um, and came up with something on my own. And I didn't write it when I first started doing it because I I tend to memorize patterns. I'm sure some of you all do that. Um, so I memorized patterns and so I knew what I liked and I knew what I had used before that I liked and all just mishmashed them all together in a pattern. So you mentioned something that I absolutely just completely cringe inside and for you folks at home, I know that you think that us yarn shop owners like to knit everything, but it's just not true. Uh, we do not like to knit everything. We might say that we might like to knit everything, but it's really a lie because when it comes to lace, there is nothing that will make my inside curdle more than if you mention the L word in my life. I just, it freaks me out. And so you mentioned, Rice. stop it. You're just being mean now. Stop it. Rice. So you said that you couldn't find lace that you liked. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I think that there are lace patterns out there that are hideously ugly for the amount of work they are um and i wanted a simple lace Amen. pattern <laughs> i wanted a simple lace pattern that i thought was beautiful and that wasn't overly complicated i just you know i think everybody wants a tv knitting project mm -hmm. where you know you can watch um you can watch netflix or whatever uh, does lace and tv knitting really go hand in hand have you have you knit the project yet okay no i haven't okay then. okay confessional i have not knit this project <laughs> But she wouldn't be here unless I thought it was beautiful. Let me just say that this is not about a mom's pride, okay? This is not like, look at my beautiful daughter and, you know, not, you know what I'm trying to say. This is not a mother of pride moment, so. Um, so I wanted a lace pattern that was simple and that you could TV knit and that repeats itself over and over and over again. Um, yeah. Wow. So <coughs> let's not talk in the abstract anymore. Let's, let's bring it forward. So it's it's sitting right behind us here. Pardon me while I stand up and readjust things. So what I didn't tell my mom is it's still not blocked. And oh my, my still gosh! Not so you know. Well, what are you gonna do with the youth these days? Well, our blocking bed has been a little. It's true. Occupied. We have had some house guests. guests. We okay. have. All right. So I'm gonna do in a hold. I'll hold. Yes. Okay. Sure. So I'm just gonna take a couple of minutes to talk about the construction. Can we hold of it up while I see it? Yes. So it's a triangular shawl mm -hmm. right it is um, and so you have four increases every other row so you're increasing at the center spine and along the edges here and I don't know if you can you I don't know if this is showing up very well but there's a really nice nicely defined center spine mm -hmm. with what looks like to be yarn overs on yep. either side right mm -hmm. yep um, and so you know your increases follow that center spine um, so your cast on point is where I'm holding right up here uh, you cast on, I think, about six stitches, something like that. And then you do a six row garter repeat. Or, sorry. Yeah, six row garter repeat. I'm looking at the back side, so it's a little tricky. Six row stockinette repeat. Six row lace repeat. Or, so it's it's 12 rows, actually. It's But you do six of each. Um, six ridges. So, and then you just repeat those three over and over and over again. And then about halfway through when you're running out of your first ball of your yarn you do a fade in here and then you go back to your just your regular repeats and there's a garter tab here at the end um did we talk about the the name of this pattern no so this is called river dance um and i named it that because i love the texture in this pattern you know when i was writing it i wanted something with lots of squish but also that was breathable and it just looks like dancing to me with the lace and the, the garter. You know, there are more stately parts and they're more fun, lighthearted parts, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, and I, I'm i a water girl. I've always loved water. Uh, I've been swimming, I think, since basically before I could remember. Um, and it matched the colors beautifully. I will say that this lace is some of the prettiest lace I've seen. And not only that, it looks like water going over the rocks in a river so I really I really am enjoying how this pattern is truly reflective of the name 
I really, I really dig that. I really like the the garter because the garter reminds me of the rocks in a pattern. Because yeah. the it, the garter is followed by the stockinette, so it looks like there's this rocky part in the river, yeah. and then the river's flowing easily, and then the lace is where the water is going over the rocks. So, how about you show us how you would wear this sure. lovely shawl? Pardon my ends, um, and while I throw this over. So I'm a shawl addict, you know, confession. My mom's a sweater knitter, generally speaking, if she can be, and I'm a shawl knitter. Um, I am rarely seen without a scarf, but it's about a million and one degrees in Williamsburg, Virginia right now. She has strong scarf game, folks. Like, I'm it's, not even playing. It's so hot here right now, though. So generally, that kind of thing, I usually will tie a uh, knot right underneath. Um, if I well, don't. let's do that so we can get these ends out of the way. <laughs> Can you hold my flat? Sure, I will hold the flat. So I'll tie a knot underneath if I don't want to wear a shawl pin or a sweater pin, that sort of, or one of the magnetic shawl pins. So I just tie a little knot, and I like to wear it at a jaunty little angle. Let me take Look this little at wrap that. off. There we go. And so it's just a fun little summery. Super you know, chic. It's just kind of fun. Super, super chic. Spunky, fun, but still kind of elegant. That's what I wanted. Right. So now... So all the rage right now is the shawls and fingering weights. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned earlier that this is DK weight. Yeah. So why did you opt for fingering versus DK? I love the squish of a DK weight yarn. Fingering. Okay. Whip it off. Let's feel it. Come on. Fingering just doesn't have the same squish to me. I think fingering weight is really nice for warm weather. Um, but this um. deals with the problem of warm weather with lace. Um, this just has such a lovely squish. Uh, also, this is made in Kim Dye's yarn, uh, Brioche DK is what this is made in. And the colorway is Charcoal Grill and Lord Grantham, um, or Lord Robert Crawley, Chief Grantham. Her Downton Abbey collection. It's part of the collection. Downton Abbey yeah. collection, that's yes. right. Um, so, but I, I just love the squish of it, you know, especially with the garter. So, if you have not tried Kim Dye's yarn, let me just say, number one, she's a Virginia hand dyer. Yeah. She is reigning supreme in my shop. I cannot keep her yarns in, her fingerings, her sugar cookies. Um, I have a really sexy silk that I want to show you here in a second. It's, oh my gosh, it's called Napoleon. Her yarns are just to die for. And so these are two colors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me just bring this up, and if you don't mind standing up, Lauren, can you just like sort of point and show everybody where the fade starts? Sure. So you, it's still not showing up super well, I think, because of the lighting, but you can see some of the fade through here, and then you can see it along the garter tab, too. There's a little bit of fade in that last garter tab to kind of bring everything full circle. Also, you can see the center spine a little bit better when we stand up. Okay. Now, um, this took two skeins of the DK? Two skeins. And then how much yardage is in her? I want to say it's okay. 270. I totaled it I and it's, it's 560 to 600 yards right. is what you need. Now, so I like my shawls a little bit bigger. Sure. And this feels small to me. Sure. Um, it is still not blocked. I understand. But, <coughs> excuse me, is there the opportunity for making this larger? Yeah, so that's the other thing that I wanted um, out of this shawl is I wanted something that was easy to make bigger. Um, that's a problem that I've run into with a lot of knitters is, you know, sizes work differently on different people and yes. people tend to like really big shawls, right? You know, it's kind of the blanket scarf sort of thing. Um, so basically to make this bigger, all you have to do is get another yarn that fades well and just repeat the pattern again. Um, the way it's written, it's sort of based around the skeins of yarn. So I, I kind of separate it by like, here's what you're doing with color one, here's what you do with color two. All you would have to do is repeat that same fade into color three. It's not difficult because really, you know, the, the repeats are always the same. It's the garter, the stock, the garter stockinette lace, garter stockinette lace until you do the garter tab and you want to stop. Um, the other thing that you know, I think some of our test knitters are probably going to try is doing it all in one color. Oh. Um, I know one of our ladies who loves texture, loves the texture of this, but she feels like it gets lost in the fade and the variegation. And so she's going to do it probably in all one color. Okay. So if you're a texture person, I would highly recommend that. I like how the shawl is super flexible. So I truly believe in being the boss of your own knitting. Like, the whammy on that yarn and do exactly what you want to 
and you know even just like you having created this pattern because you couldn't find what you wanted mm -hmm. but this still may not be what somebody else wants and Absolutely. they might want to change it as well so I really like the fact that it's flexible because so often I get shawls that have this center spine right here that you can't change the size of the shawl because of the placement mm -hmm. of their spine right makes me absolutely crazy but I really like the fact that you know for me if I want a bigger shawl or even for you mm -hmm. the youth of the knitting world um, I know blanket scarves are really big right now they are mm -hmm. and so you can go just as big as you might want absolutely now Kim does yarn this is a superwash so we are anticipating that it will grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like even just us holding it, I can feel some stretch. I mean, you can see yeah. even without blocking how much yeah. it'll stretch. Because, you know, the other thing is garter tend, garter and lace tend to stretch a lot. Um, so I think once it's blocked, it's going to bloom. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, talking about being the boss of your own knitting, I actually write that in my pattern notes for Ravelry. You know, I explicitly say, you know, if this is not exactly how you want it to be, like tweak it, play with it make it so that it's a product that makes you happy. Oh, that's super interesting. What size needle? Size six. Size six? Mm -hmm. That's the other thing is it's a really quick knit because it's, you know, oh, two yeah. skeins of DK on size six needles. That's, you know, and so it's there's threes and fours in the trash and garter the half the time. Yeah. So. so how long did it take you to knit this? Probably about a month. And you have to remember, you know, I was, you were in, creating I, was at the same time. I was creating and I was also in school and, you know, yeah. I don't know that any of you are familiar with William and Mary, but, um, it's a pressure cooker. That's how my mom refers to it. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's that's just true. a lot of work. And I work two jobs at the same time. So, yeah. uh, you know, two You did the thing. Me. You did the thing. Yes. Right on. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, there was a limited amount of time that I was actually able to knit. So. Well, I think it's gorgeous. Thank you. I, 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 I would not have invited her on this podcast if I thought it was anything but. But now, talk to me about the pattern. Mm hmm. Um, it. Is it available? It is available on Ravelry. Um, the name on Ravel Ravelry is Lauren Renee. I might be tweaking it so it's River of Yarns. So just keep your eyes peeled. Um, but the pattern name is River Dance, and that's not going to change. So it is available on Ravelry. It's available for six dollars. Um, I'm still tweaking it, and it's in the test knitting phase. So it probably won't actually be available for sale for at least a couple more weeks. Um, but if you wanted to email me um, or call the shop and ask for Ask to Test Knit, we can get you a copy of the pattern. Oh, that's exciting. That's super exciting. Now, you are on Instagram, correct? I am, at River of Yarn, R-I-V-E-R-O-F-Y-A-R-N. And then the pattern name River Dance, is that one word or two? Two. Two words. Two words. All right, perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, I have some more questions. You yeah, want to put it back on? Sure. Let's, with your super jaunty, you know, flat. Side angle. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to put it back on? Oh, on me? I'm on sorry, you. I thought you meant on the mannequin. No, 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 on you. Definitely. Yes, sure. On you. Okay. So, while you're, while you're robing yourself, I, <laughs> I, have a couple of, I have a couple of questions for mm -hmm. you. So, I, um, I find it super interesting um, when I run into people who can sort of take an idea and create something. I know that there are some people that said, well, you created something. You created a shop space. It feels very tangible to me, mm -hmm. um, but like picking something that and creating something that has never been done before is a little daunting. I find that a little daunting. Mm -hmm. So I put you in like the hashtag creator realm. <laughs> so talk to me about talk to me a little bit about that process and and how you feel about that tag about the process of creating and yes. the identity of creator. Yes. I don't know. I think it's a tricky one to claim because I'm still sort of starting out. And so I don't necessarily feel like a creator. You're a creator, sister. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's really exciting. Um, I think it's, I was just frustrated with what I was finding. And so I was like, well, you know, I'm just going to do this for myself. And even if nobody else likes it, I'm going to make this for myself and I'm going to make something beautiful. Um, and I just got lucky enough that the ladies who come to Knit Nights here liked it, and my mom liked it, and everybody I showed liked it. And I think, you know, that's the key, right? I think that's what moves you from, like, being kind of a creator in your own head to 
somebody that actually creates for other people is, you know, other people falling in love with the kind of work you do. Oh, yeah. Validation. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you create something and people don't like it? I mean, I stand by creating things that I love and you know even if other people don't like it i like it and so then maybe it's not something that i'm creating for other people but right. you know if i don't like it at the end of the day i don't want to be touching it you know it's, it's like if you can't make yourself laugh with your jokes yes then you know that's you, you just you need to be able to make yourself laugh well it looks really good on you thank you even despite like the ends that you haven't woven in <laughs> you, you feel the mother coming out in me now you feel that it's really beautiful <laughs> It's like when I like maybe don't wash my hair for oh, a day on. in a row, and oh, then she's on. like, bitterness. You didn't, you didn't tuck your ends in right. Stop. Okay, so shall I out you? Sure. Shall I out you? So, the only pattern that you're going to make? No, it is not the only pattern that I'm going to make. Um, so, it's going to be one in a series of three, at least. Um, and I want to play off the river and the water theme. So you sort of mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I have always been a water bug. I When did I start taking swimming lessons? I actually was trying to- You were like four. Yeah, I don't remember it. I really don't remember it. I believe in the water, yes. There's this great picture of me as a kid where I have a bowl cut and I'm like cheesing in the water and my mom looks super embarrassed. It's great. Uh, I'm not. In the YMCA, it's great. I'm not. Um, I rocked the bowl cut in 96, <laughs> but anyway. Um, so yeah, so this is one of three. I have the second one that's in process of designing now. I'm just going to kind of let you peek at it. Wow, this is big. I'm just, this is all you're getting. Just this little baby peek. That is so cruel. I, you, you know, what are you I'm not do? taking any complaints about this, folks. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. I didn't know she was going to do this. I told her not to do it, and here she is. She's flashing you. Like, well, I, I don't even know what to say. If you want to complain about it, I have an Instagram page where you can comment all day long. Okay, there you go. I invite <laughs> you to blow up her Instagram page. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, so here's your little peek of it. Um, so there's some fading going on. Um, this one, I think, is probably going to be called River of Dreams. Um, just sort of keep on going with the river theme. And then there will be a third one as well. Do you have an idea of what you're working on for the third one? I can't tell you that. So not, you're not even telling us it's a shawl or no, garment? No, absolutely not. Oh, come on. I don't even get inside track information. Oh, that is so me. Do you think J.K. Rowling's <laughs> children got inside track information? Oh, yes. No. <coughs> I think that is so mean. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to throw some. Oh, really? <gasps> really? Okay. I. Do you realize the power that I have right now? I could just, like, totally... <laughs> whip out baby Lauren stories. <laughs> like I might like sneak in a video in the middle of this and like splice them all together. Like don't mess with me. Don't mess with me, sister. Do not mess with me. Okay. We're getting way off track here. Um inspiration. Talk about where you draw your inspiration from. My mom. Oh my come on. In part. I am not a river dance. I'm not a river of dreams. Come on. Yeah, but you are the flying needles and you have all of these beautiful fibers in your store for me to play with. That's true. Yeah. You do have access. Yeah. But I did touch on this a little bit too. Um, I'm really inspired by sort of the outdoors. I'm a big outdoors kid. My mom firmly believed growing up that a dirty kid was a happy kid. Uh, we often were kicked out of the house. I have a younger sister. We were often kicked out of the house and said, yeah, you can't come back till sundown. See you later. <laughs> See you for dinner. Bye. <laughs> it's true. So I was always outside as a kid and I love, you know, I love springtime. I love summer. I love growing things. Um, I, when I was little, I have very fond memories of my mom gardening because before she knitted she gardened all the time she had like seven ginormous blueberry bushes that are like my height as an adult woman um so i have a lot of fond memories of that and so you know i have i draw a lot of that inspiration from the outdoors you know i we used to play all the time in rivers when we lived in radford virginia we were on the um the new river so you know just the outdoors sunshine green things water so do you feel like uh, knitwear design could be, you know, a real thing for you? Could be. I mean, I think, you know, uh, it's a thing until I make it stop being a thing. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm excited about it. And as long as I'm excited about it, I want to keep doing it. And, you know, if I'm going to be addicted to knitting anyway, can I introduce you to my dealer? Uh, That's true. <laughs> 
I want to be making things that I am absolutely in love with. Fair enough. I think that's lovely. So let's talk about test knitting. So have you had uh, your lovely shawl test knit? Yes. Not yet. I have three test knitters so far. Thank you to all of you. You're all wonderful. I'm so excited to see what you all do with the pattern. Um, but I am still accepting people if they want to test it. Um, I'm hoping that a couple of couple more people in our local yarn shop community will test in it for me. Did you see her looking at me, folks? Did you see her looking at me? I know you saw that. I know people. I do. <laughs> I know people. My hand is going to be like this this year. It's going to be the claw. <laughs> the knitting claw. You got to do uh, like knitting yoga. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. So how many test knitters do you think you might want? I will take as many are willing to test knit for me. Um, you know, ideally somewhere in the range of 10 to 14. Um, but you know, if I can get more people than that, that would be awesome too. And what kind of time frame are you looking at? So I think we're looking at trying to maybe test knit it in August. Um, I would guess it will probably take about a month, maybe two to knit. Um, I'm hoping it won't take more than that for most people. It, you know, it hope, hopefully it's an easy knit. I want it to be an easy knit. Right, so. right. So what she's hinting at, folks, is a knit along. Yes, because, you know, we don't let a moment of our calendar go by without some sort of knit along going on. But before I talk about that, will the pattern be test knit before the knit along? Yes. Okay. That's the plan. That's the plan. That's the plan. By three or four knitters? Three or four. A small number. It'll be a small number. Okay. Um, you know, I think the, the like, plus of having more test knitters, you know, because by the time you've got three or four, you've kind of worked the kinks out of the pattern. But I think having more test knitters is useful because I can understand what I'm writing well in a pattern and what I'm not. And plus, if it's a knit along, you get a whole range of knitters, right? You get people who are very experienced and you get people who are basically beginners. Um, and that's actually the other thing about this pattern is this is a good, I, I think it's a good kind of transition from, you know, advanced beginner to intermediate. You know, like I said, the lace is not overly complicated in this. Um, and I think it could be a really good pattern for somebody who's trying to get into more advanced techniques, but needs kind of a stepping stone. You know, I like to think of knitting projects when I'm learning things because that's a cool thing about knitting is you're always learning something sure but ideally I think the ratio is like if there are three t techniques in the pattern you know two of them and you're learning one of them which is exactly the ratios of this pattern I've got a stockinette and a right. garter section so that's knits and pearls and then there's lace other than that you know that's a I think that's a really good ratio for beginners okay so here's what we're thinking folks um, you can hit Lauren up on her Instagram account and she will email you the pattern out if you are interested in test knitting. We have a tentative timeline of August 18th. We are finishing one knit along that day. It's a Saturday. We're finishing up some other things that I'm about ready to talk about. And then I think we're also going to have the kickoff for, um, for this lovely shawl that same day. Um, it could be a lot of fun, and I think we're going to keep it to one month, and I think we're probably going to offer prizes for who crosses the finish line first because it's such a quick knit. And then are you going to be on hand for open stitches here Wednesdays if people need some technical instruction? Yeah, yes? there will be. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Instruction from the pattern designer. You can't get any better than that. Wow. That's awesome. So. Anything else you want to cover before we sort of transition into a few other things? No. No? No. Well, I'm very excited for you. Thank Not you. Not only because you're my daughter, but because I just think they're lovely. And just wait till you see this little thing right here. <laughs> Ooh, doggy. It's going to be beautiful. I'm excited about it. Okay, so speaking of knit alongs, mm -hmm. you want to tra transition into that? Yeah. Okay, so we kicked off the Danzig shawl by Justina. I cannot pronounce her last name. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce her last name. I don't want to butcher it. I want to be respectful. Um, but it's the Danzig shawl. It's on Ravelry. And as all things do, it started with one person doing it. And it started like a craze. It's exactly, it was like dominoes falling. 
So, Rosemary Cammer, Yarnista on staff who helped me open my shop. She was in here whipping up a shawl for her trip to see her son in Colorado. And we all know that Colorado Rockies are a little bit chillier than it is here in Williamsburg in coastal territory. Thank you, 90 degree weather. Yeah, so she whipped up the Stanzig shawl in the spring. I do not have it because she is not deigned to return it from her trip, like the nerve, you know what I'm saying? So here's mine, because you you know that purple and green rule in my life. So here are the handy dandy needle keepers. Like if you don't have this, you need to have this. Okay, so here we go. Here, this look like, looks like a little bikini, oh my gosh. So this is the start of mine. And the starting point is down here by Lauren's thumb and finger, right down here. And then it moves up in here into what Justina calls these little pebble rows. And it's just like so much fun. Mm -hmm. Aren't you living for the pebbles? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, now here's the trick. I don't want you to think that I'm lying to you or, you know, misleading you in any way. So this color, this purple right here, right here, let me hold it in front of my nose. You're not carrying that. Yes, that means you're cutting it. Yes, that means ends you have to weave. Yes, you can do the thing, I promise. It's not that hard. So, <coughs> I'm on, I just finished my third pebble. Fourth, one, two, three, four, I can't count, sorry. Um, and what I do is I get like three rows of this, three or four rows of this garter in, and then I just take my handy dandy garter needle and I whip these ends in. So, you're doing the dancing knit along, right? I am. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'll see what you're seeing while she's getting hers out. These little bubbles, these are the pebble rows. So, what we have here are, Justina wrote the pattern to have traditional short row wraps and turns. Well, we did the whole wrap and turn versus German short row. Ha! We went German. Yes, we taught folks the German short row translation. People are having a grand time. Okay, let's see yours. So for the record, mine was at the same level when mom left for work this morning, and now she is a full pebble ahead of me. Not that I'm bitter. Well, you know, what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. So this is done in Dragonfly Fibers, uh, which we carry here. And this one, I, I think it's the Ginny, the one with the cashmere. Is the buttermilk the Ginny? The, you have two buttermilks. One is in the Pixie, and the other is in the yeah. Jenny. So the Jenny is the one that has the cashmere. Mine has cashmere. Yeah. Uh, because I just need sexy yarn. Yeah. So, and I have a dealer. Yeah, uh, maybe you're familiar. That's true. And then she has worked for the sexy yarn. Let me oh, just say, yes. there's sweat equity in in the sexy yarns. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me just say that. Um, but the blue that you're seeing, and I don't think it's showing up super well, but there's this gorgeous blue and yellow and green and kind of like brownish tone happening there. It's called African Daisy, it's right? It's African Daisy also in Dragonfly Fibers, and that one is in the Pixie. That's in the Pixie? Mm -hmm. So Dragonfly Fibers is in Maryland, and they are a lovely dye house. And these two fibers that we're talking about, they're both in fingering weight yarns. The Pixie is 100% single ply um, yarn. 100% superwash, and then the Jenny I think is an 80-10-10, 80% superwash, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, mm -hmm. right? It is quite lovely. Oh my god, it's so fun to work with. Yeah, quite lovely. And the yellow, this is a yellow, this is called buttermilk. It is. And then African daisies and the pebbles. It's a nice creamy yellow. And then here, I forgot to even talk about my yarn. So, I should really, can you just like get that up there in front of the camera because they really need to see this. So this yarn is Kim Dye's yarn, Napoleon. And let me tell you folks, Kim did a custom colorway for me, number one. Cause you know, I gotta, there's, you can't find a cream base with like green speckle. It's just really hard. Like you can get it with other speckles plus the green. I wanted green. And so she's like, well, all I have is this Napoleon with that has 20% silk. I was like, oh, the tragedies. <laughs> so, <coughs> Lovely Kim whipped up this Napoleon and I'll be carrying this in my shop and let me just tell you something Would you like to feel? Wait, I'm charging admission <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's really It's really lovely. It's It's really lovely. It's super sexy. Yeah, 
One of the things that I wish, you know, with mine was that it was a little bit better for summer. You know, cashmere is not oh, yeah. a great summer fiber. Uh, but I saw the cashmere and I was like, mm, this is going in my bag. Over. It, just, <laughs> it left in my bag. Rolled it's not it. my uh, fault. It's not my fault. I didn't fault. do it. Okay. Uh, but that is perfect for summer. You know, it's it so lightweight and lovely. You know, I think that will be really lovely, you know, starting to wear in the fall. It has a, and you can't see this, but it has a really nice sheen to it. Mm -hmm. um, I use lace needles. I use the Chagu red lace set. Red lace set. And I've not had a single problem with splitting. I've not had any problems with this yarn. And um, there's more coming. It's in the mail as we speak, this cream base on, with the green speckle. And then the other one that I have going on is the, because that Napoleon is a ply, it's got a nice twist to it. I went with Malabrigo's Sock, Sabadoria. And that, the Sabadoria is such a fun purple because it like pulls in some pinks, some fuchsias, and some really deep purples. I just love it. I don't know if it's easier to see under the light or not. But I don't know. That's really, you know, I think there, depth. there are like at least four different shades of pink in here. Yeah. And, you know, that's not including all the purples. Shades of yeah. purple. mm -hmm. It's really, it's gorgeous. It's something. And I really like Malabrigo for, from a knitting standpoint as well as a yarn shop owner standpoint because. Malabrigo has a really great, great price point, mm -hmm. and you can walk out with some gorgeous hand, you know, kettle dyed yarns for a shawl at a reasonable price, and you don't feel like you have to break the bank to do it. Um, but just really, really lovely. So we kicked this, um, we kicked this knit along off. When did we do that? Two weeks ago? Because this will be the third week, right? Yeah. So there's still time to join. Um, I've had people join us from all over the U.S. Uh, the Knit Alongs, they just keep posting to the Ravelry thread, they post to Instagram, they post to Facebook. There are prizes and I will ship the prizes. So every time you post your little Danzig, you can go to Ravelry and you can download it and I also will ship you the cream Napoleon with the green speckle if you want it um, and any other yarn that I have. But um, if you post your pictures. To any of those social media outlets then you will have and every time you do that you'll get an entry for the grand prize you could have a tattoo on your forehead that says uh have yarn will ship it's true you i really do it. i really think i would like neon ching, 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 <laughs> or one of those you know when, it, when your ladies one of her ladies thinks that she should have a name tag that says hello my name is temptress it's true but if i get that shirt i'm getting that with bling <laughs> it needs to be all in bling <laughs> Hello. Can't you just see it? Black shirt, mm -hmm. all bling, and with an exclamation point. Oh, yeah. It's all blinged up. It's like rhinestone. Yeah, I can see it so well. I think you should wear it tomorrow. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, so I have another fun announcement. Do you notice the cute little bag that my Danzig is in? Do you see that? Look how fun that is. Cute little D ring. Do you see the sheep? There's you see that green bottom too, right? Well, Angela Quilts 2 is going to be working on some bags for me. And this is one of the sizes of bags. Excuse me, I'm still having allergies. You guys are going to have to hang with me. <coughs> it's one of the sizes that she's going to have. And on this little D-ring right here, she's working on having a swivel little wristlet. And the really cool thing about this bag Hang on, got a dump. Is, let me turn it inside out. Full effect here. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, she did. See that? There's a pocket on the inside. Not only is there a pocket, there's a little tiny, little tiny spot right there for your needles. How cool is that? I just love it. It's pretty exciting. I love it. Pockets are a girl's best friend. It's true. I mean, they never make our clothing with pockets, so we've got to go for bags. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So, the bags are going to be in my shop for the first time Saturday of, <coughs> excuse me, Worldwide Knit and Public Day, which is coming up. Um, we're doing a huge blowout here at the Flying Needles for Worldwide Knit and Public Day. We're taking over the sidewalk at Williamsburg Crossing, which is the, the strip mall that I'm in. 
uh, they don't know it yet. It's a really wide sidewalk with an awning, so it doesn't matter the weather, rain, snow, whatever, we're gonna be great. And it's about 20 degrees cooler under that awning than it is regularly. So, but even more important than Worldwide Knit and Public Day is this Saturday is the kickoff for our Handmade for the Homeless Project. And you remember our Handmade for the Homeless Project. I do. So, um, I also come from a nonprofit world and know that there are people out there who are in need of items for whatever reason that they are in need. Um, and I wanted to be a leader in the community um, to make sure that we address the needs here in the Williamsburg community. So we partnered with the Williamsburg House of Mercy and we provided them last year for the first time over 300 crocheted, knitted, crafted, felted items. That's not including all the donations that they got of socks and underwear and other things. Like some folks are rolling up in here with knitted sweaters and knitted blankets because also what House of Mercy does is they do transitional placement for families. So they like to place them in houses and then when they do that, they provide them with all the stuff that they need to start up a home as well. And they like to give them a housewarming gift and some of those knitted blankets were housewarming gifts for those folks. So the Handmade for the Homeless project is our summer charity knitting project. It will kick off um, Saturday, June 9th, and it will conveniently, I know you're gonna love this, um, the serendipity, right? Um, it's gonna go all the way to August 18th. And so we have June, July, and August to knit and crochet and felt and craft, um, hats, mittens, scarves, socks, sweaters, anything that you might think that someone who is in, um, what's the word, risky housing, is that the, is that the term that I'm trying? Housing risk? Uh, I think it's at risk housing. At risk something. housing. It's something like There's that. There's some sort of buzz term that, term that that um, that we're addressing here. But um, I've had people mail in stuff. It's been super lovely. Um, so if you feel like this is something that resonates with you and you want to come and you want to contribute, there'll be a press release, a full press release up on the website, flyingneedlesyarn.com. Um, pretty soon, uh, Shannon Wolzanowski, the executive director of Williamsburg House of Mercy, will be here on site Saturday, who is also a knitter. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, so she'll be here Saturday to talk about the population that she's serving and where all of our gifts are going to be going. So it's, also, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And then on Saturday, August 18th, Shannon will come back and we're gonna take a picture of all the stuff that we've made. We're gonna have the dan we're gonna have the Danzig will be winding up, the Danzig knit along will be winding up, and then we'll be kicking off this lovely frock. I did not miss the pun in there. I uh, know. Did you like that? Hey, it was good. Did you like that? One does try. Yeah. One does try. So that's everything I have. Do you have anything else you want to add? Do, that, do I need to go over my notes anymore? Did we, did we go over everything? How many for the homeless, Danzig? I think that we did everything. Um, don't forget that we're collecting Find Your Fades for the um, Worldwide Knit and Public Day yes. the display. It's It'll true. Be beautiful. So we're gonna start a we're gonna start our museum feel. We had a free and find your fade knit along recently, and so. We've had a call for all of those items that were knit during the knit along, and we're gonna have them on display here and then check it out. Oh yeah, 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 that's what we're doing. We're gonna have a People's Choice Award. So everybody's gonna get to vote on their favorite. And then oh, there is yeah. a prize for the People's Choice Award, but I'm not telling you what that prize is because that's a secret. Yeah, see, how can you pick on me for this? And you know, you know, I'm just saying stones and glass houses. That was really mean. Like that's so is telling the people. They don't care about a prize. They I, care about knit. I think knit they wear. probably care. I don't know. I don't think so. But you can let us know in the comments if you care. Okay, I promise. So you good? I'm good. You have anything else to say? You knitwear designer, you? No, just thanks for listening. All right, you want to go over your Instagram again? Uh, so it's at River of Yarn. R as in river. <laughs> I as in Iris. <laughs> V is in Vicky, E is an elephant, R is in river, O is an octopus, 
F is in Frank, Y is in yarn, <laughs> A is in here. art, R is in river, and N as in needles. And if you don't have an Instagram account and you just can't bring yourself to mess around with social media, give us a call here at the shop. That number is area code 757-345-3655. Um, you good? I'm good. All right. High five. High five. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thanks for coming. Have a great day. He's good. That's good. You did good. You did good. Look at you. Well, I've had practice with this. You haven't. What? I've had practice with this. Do you have it?